These legs aren't long enough. Her nails are way too ugly. This one hasn't even shaved her legs, and here... Wait a minute! This tattoo? I've seen it somewhere before! Impossible! C could it really be her? No, wait. Let me start from the beginning. My name is Troy, and I'm 19 years old. And as far as I can remember, I've always dreamed of becoming a celebrity. Being in the spotlight, the red carpets, paparazzi following me everywhere. I really liked the idea of it all. I dreamed of getting on television, but I was already 19 years old and still haven't come up with an idea of what I could do to finally become a star. In the meantime, I was living a completely ordinary life. I slept until lunch, played computer games, and hung out with my friends in the evenings. I was actually quite happy with how things were. But then came a day that changed everything. That day, my father came up to me and said, Troy William Malone, we need to have a serious talk. My heart immediately sank, and for a good reason. Things can't go on like this. You're out of high school, but you're just lazing around instead of going to college. I only rolled my eyes at that. My parents were always telling me off and trying to make me do things I didn't want to do. I was used to brushing them off and saying I wouldn't go because studying would distract me from becoming a star. However, something went wrong that time, and my father said, In that case, your mother and I are not going to support you anymore. You either go to college or start looking for a new home. I couldn't believe my ears. Was he serious? Was he really going to kick me out just because I didn't want to waste my time on college? In that case, I didn't want to live with them either. My father's words made me so angry that I immediately went to pack my things. Besides, I had a place I could stay at. Of course, I went straight to Emily, my girlfriend. At the time, we'd only been dating for a couple of months, but I was sure we were very serious. Without thinking twice, I told her everything, and to be honest, I was expecting her to be happy, but Emily didn't want us to live together at all. There was barely enough room for her and her cat in her small one-room apartment. But I really had nowhere else to live, so after a little thought, she finally agreed to let me in. Oh, if only I'd known how things would turn out. At first, life with Emily was like a fairy tale. I would wake up to a hot breakfast waiting for me on the table. In the evening, when she came home from college, we would talk a lot and then go for a walk. Of course, we no longer went to the movies or cafes because I had no money. But Emily didn't seem upset. After all, even the internet at her apartment was better than at my house. So during the day while she was away, I didn't feel bored and spent time playing computer games. Then one day, I heard the familiar words. Troy, we need to have a serious talk. It turned out that Emily was very unhappy with me. She started yelling at me about doing nothing but playing computer all day, not looking for a job, always distracting her with my chatter, and also about the fact that I hadn't gifted her anything in ages. I hadn't got a clue that she could stand me that much. I thought we had a perfect relationship. To be honest, Emily really hurt me. But there must have been some truth in what she said. So I decided to look for a job anyway. And you know, it turned out to be much harder than I thought. Most of the vacancies, of course, I didn't look twice at. I lacked the skills or experience for the jobs I didn't mind getting. Suddenly, I had a brilliant idea. A TV show, of course. That's what I would be best at, and what would make me famous. So the next day, I dressed up and went to the largest TV studio in the city. I didn't just choose a random show, but the coolest one, about people surviving on a desert island. People had to pass a number of tests to become a contestant. Medical checkup, telling about myself, endurance training, I nailed everything. But then came the time for the final test. You won't believe what it was. We were given live insects to eat. I almost threw up, but I pulled myself together and bravely agreed to do it. The other participants, on the other hand, refused to eat something so gross. Their loss. After all, the organizers almost immediately announced that no one would actually have to eat insects. It had been a test, and I had, fortunately, successfully passed it. I was sure that they would choose me for the TV show. All that was left to do was wait for the announcement. In the meantime, I decided to take a walk around the pavilion. After all, I was in the place I had dreamed my whole life of going to. Walking between the props, I suddenly noticed a suspicious-looking couple in the corner. 
I hid behind a box and saw something interesting. Glancing around, my competitor for the spot on the TV show pulled a huge wad of money out of his jacket and handed it to the organizer, who put it in his pocket and whispered something. I couldn't hear what it was. After lunch, there was an announcement of the winners who had been chosen for the show. I was looking forward to hearing my name. My heart was pounding wildly, but surprisingly enough, the organizer got to the last name and it wasn't mine. It was the contestant I'd seen in the pavilion among the props. Only then did I realize what had happened. He had bribed the organizer and stolen my spot on the TV show. I had never felt so wronged in my life. Terribly upset, I headed for the exit, when suddenly, I was stopped at the door. A girl was standing in front of me, looking very nervous. It turned out that another TV show was being filmed in the next pavilion on that same day. But the thing was, the main participant had suddenly fallen ill and hadn't come. They urgently needed a replacement, because the live broadcast couldn't be cancelled. Had my luck finally turned around? Not quite daring to believe it, I agreed of course. On the way to the shooting location, the girl quickly explained to me what the show was all about. It was called 10 Reasons to Fall in Love, and its star was supposed to look for a perfect girlfriend. He would take a look at the body parts of strangers without seeing their faces. The contestants he liked the least would be eliminated until there would be only one left. I was absolutely thrilled with the idea. All the cameras were focusing on me. The eyes of thousands of viewers were glued to the screens. As many as 10 girls were fighting for my attention. What could possibly be cooler? That was the moment I'd been waiting for my whole life. Of course, I immediately decided to be unforgettable and impress absolutely everyone. In the first round, I had to look at the girls' waists. I didn't hesitate to say everything I thought. That navel was too ugly, that girl had too much fat on her sides, and that one had a very weird mole. I didn't worry about hurting anyone's feelings. The most important thing was for me to look cool, because that could be my only chance to prove myself. I didn't hold back any comments while assessing hands, ears, and hair either. I said the most unpleasant things I could think of. Finally, only four contestants were left in the final round. I walked out onto the set and saw a row of slender legs right in front of me. By that point, I had already got deep into the character of a strict critic and wasn't going to back down. Those legs weren't long enough. Those had ugly nails. The third pair, ugh, was that hair? Who even let her in? Not wanting to see any more of that mess, I moved on to the last legs, when suddenly, my gaze settled on the tattoo. Wait a minute, I had seen it somewhere before. I thought hard for a few seconds and finally understood. I simply couldn't not recognize that tattoo because it was the same as... Emily's! Was my girlfriend behind that screen? I simply couldn't believe it. I felt like I was in some stupid, very scary dream. A moment ago, I had been standing there, happy and confident, and now I suddenly felt like the ground was slipping away from under my feet. Did Emily no longer love me? Or maybe she never had. Had she secretly come to the show to find a new boyfriend? What I didn't know then was that things wouldn't stop at just that betrayal. I suddenly looked around and realized that people in the studio were looking at me with disapproval. I realized that I had got too carried away and gotten a little too far while criticizing those girls' legs. I could hardly remember what happened next. Everything was a blur. The show came to an end, but my girlfriend didn't want to come out to me, and it was definitely her. Emily said she didn't want anything to do with me. She dumped me right in the studio, in front of everyone. I came to Emily's house in a daze. A suitcase with my things was waiting for me at the door. Things were bad already, but life hadn't really prepared me for what happened next. When I went down and came out of the house, there was a group of guys waiting for me. What was going on? I could tell by their clenched fists and scowling faces that they didn't feel particularly friendly towards me. It turned out that they were brothers of the girl I had criticized so much because of her hairy legs. They'd got angry on her behalf and come to show me with their fists how I was wrong. Of course, I immediately fled and ran for as long as I could. After a while, they fell behind and I hid in the bushes. What had I done wrong? Why had things got so bad? I didn't have a girlfriend or a home anymore. I was left on the streets, completely alone.
I eventually got over my pride and called my father. He listened to me carefully and took pity on me, telling me to come home. Well, I have realized that now my parents are the best in the world. As for me, I don't even know. Maybe I don't really deserve to be successful, or I haven't done enough for it. What do you think? Please write in the comments down below. How can I fix everything? After all, I really don't want to upset or hurt anyone anymore.